supposed to sit down.
Repeat after me. Christ is our firm foundation. Christ is our firm foundation. Amen. Good evening. My name is Christopher Kingdom Greer. And I'm Josie, and we get the great opportunity of welcoming you all to the commencement ceremony of the class of 2023. Tonight we celebrate not only the completion of our high school years, but of the parents, friends, families, and staff who have been our guides throughout this journey of high school. Most importantly, tonight is a celebration of what we've built our lives on the past several years which is the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. We also ask God for guidance as we will hopefully continue to stand firm on his foundation in the next steps of our lives. So as we continue tonight, let us open our hearts to the presence of God and make this a time of worship. Hear these words from Matthew 7, verses 24 through 25 in the book that we love. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we would like to welcome the head of schools, Dr. Eric Forsa. Welcome to the 122nd graduation of Holland Christian. Before we bow our heads in prayer, as head of schools, I want to thank each family here for the commitment to the church family school partnership in this journey of Christian education. We are especially grateful tonight for grandparents, parents, siblings, great uncles, uncles, aunts, and close family members who are now encouraging our seniors in unfolding God's kingdom each new day. Let's open a special evening in prayer together, please. Dear Lord, as we celebrate a culmination of accomplishments with all these seniors and their families, may you bless their new beginnings as they journey to college, technical training, the trades, and all the noble callings that you ordain. Will you especially help these students to usher in your kingdom by being agents of redemption and reconciliation? Help the graduates to live out Christ-like values by making a difference in the lives of others. And may each grad graduate steadfastly model what it looks like to transform the world for Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blessings of these past four years of high school, the positive influence of teachers and administrative personnel, and the deep love of parents, grandparents, siblings, and close family members. May our fellowship as a Christian community tonight honor and praise you in the same way we hope that these students positively impact your kingdom in the years ahead. We pray earnestly that all of us in attendance today can acknowledge your guidance found in the scripture of Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. May it be so in the years ahead for these graduates. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Hello everyone, I'm not Sam. And I'm Sam Not. With me is Ainsley Vandenbrink. At this time, we would like to acknowledge the people who have made high school so great and memorable for all of us in the class of 2023. To our administrators, Mr. Calago, Mr. Keene, and Dr. Forsett, thank you for your dedica dedication to Holland Christian's mission and for helping our school function smoothly. We appreciate how, even with all you do to provide direction and wisdom for our school, you always find time to stop and talk with us in the halls. Mrs. Vanierden and Mrs. Vanderlaan, thank you for greeting us with smiles even when we walk in late for finding substitute teachers to oversee our classes, and for filling in by doing the often unnoticed tasks around school. Your kind faces brighten our days as we enter and exit the building. To our counselors, Mrs. Christner, Mrs. Travers, and Mr. DeBleecourt, 
We're grateful for how you've helped us get our schedules in order, meet important deadlines, and plan for the future. Just as importantly, we are grateful for how you've made it a priority to know us as people behind our schedules, deadlines, and future plans. Your doors have always been open, and we greatly appreciate your wisdom as we've journeyed through high school. Librarians, you've created a comfortable and organized environment that allows us as students to work diligently and peacefully. The library is a safe place for many of us, and we appreciate all that you do to make it that way. To our lunch staff, thank you for your cheerfulness and patience as you've dealt with crazy lunch lines and hungry high schoolers. We're grateful for Tex-Mex Thursday, Fredo Friday, and of course, the glorious and much anticipated return of the deli. We will miss your cinnamon rolls and smiling faces as we begin this next chapter of our lives. Party Paul and the custodial staff. You guys spend hours before, during, and after school ensuring that our classrooms, bathrooms, and hallways are ready for use, and we thank you for that. On behalf of the senior class, we apologize for all the Mr. Keene stickers that you will have to remove in the coming days. <laughs> to those who make chapel so great, to the worship teams, the chapel speakers, and the tech team, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs, for helping students develop their musical talents and lead the school in worship. We also appreciate all the chapel speakers, especially our peers who shared their senior testimonies. Your words have impacted us, and we take them with us. A big thank you also goes to Justin Dreyer and the tech crew, who spend countless hours coordinating everything behind the scenes. Lastly, we acknowledge our chaplain, Mr. Russ, for how you have led us spiritually and brought our school closer to God. Whether through a hello in the hallway, a deep conversation in your office, or a story from the chapel stage, we can clearly see your passion for furthering Christ's kingdom and equipping us to do the same. To our coaches, athletic trainers, and athletic director, Mr. Engbers, thank you for investing in us not only as athletes, but also as well-rounded students and followers of God. You have taught us the importance of using sports as an opportunity to share the light of Christ with others. Thank you for your dedication to us through the hours you spend on the court, track, course, field, and poolside. Grandparents, siblings, and friends, the encouragement and love that you have shown us has helped us to get here today and will help us continue to transform the world for Jesus beyond Holland Christian. Thanks for investing in our lives, attending our events, and taking us out for ice cream afterwards. We especially appreciate how you come alongside us and model for us what it means to follow Christ. Parents, how can we thank you enough? You get to see the side of us that no one else does. The tired, stressed, angry side that has just come home from a long day of studying and other extracurriculars. And yet, you love us just the same. Thank you for providing us with the opportunity of an education that challenges us to explore your faith um, in our classes, sports, chapels, and everything that we do. We bless God for you, and we could not be here without your commitment to loving us. We love you, and we thank you. To our teachers, your impact on our lives is hard to describe. Thank you for teaching us about our world, each other, ourselves, and God. We see your love for Jesus not only in what you say and teach, but also in how you walk your talk. Thank you for greeting us by name, asking about our lives, and truly listening to our answers. You always seem to know when we need to be challenged and when we need to be encouraged. Thanks for putting up with our occasional shenanigans and frequent senioritis, and freshmanitis and sophomoreitis and junioritis for some of us. You've poured into every last person on this stage and have prepared us well for this next chapter of our lives. As we leave this place, we will be taking with us many of the funny things you say and even more of the wise, Christ-like things you say and do. So while we don't say it as often as we should, on behalf of our entire senior class, thank you, teachers. Above all, we thank God for his faithfulness to us and to this school over the last four years. We thank him for providing those who have equipped our minds and nurtured our hearts so that as we go forward into college and the workforce, we may indeed transform the world for Jesus Christ. You'll see in your program tonight that we were originally planning on singing a song called I Speak Jesus, which is a song we've been able to share with our HC community and local churches this year. However, we're going to switch things up a little bit tonight, and instead we're going to sing a new song that we've recently learned called Revelation 19 verse 1. This song has been a really powerful reminder of who our God is, 
and his faithfulness in our lives, especially as our seniors reflect on the last 12 years. Hallelujah, he is wonderful.
Hello everyone, my name is James Osterhaus. And my name is Lydia Dublicourt. And we are here to reflect on our four-year journey here at Holland Christian High School. A wise person once said that the days are long, but the years go fast. That certainly couldn't be more true. Coming into high school, we were all ready for something new. It was scary yet exciting as we entered into a new building, beginning a new chapter in our lives, surrounded by new classmates and new teachers. I'm sure we all remember walking into the gym for freshman orientation, unsure of what to expect, as the seniors all led us around the school with the goal of helping us not to get lost on our first day of class. Our theme for our first year of high school was living testimony. We were reminded and encouraged throughout the year by our teachers and chapel speakers what it means to live our lives in a way that influences others to follow Christ. Our freshman year was full of new and exciting opportunities. The musical for our freshman year was Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Coach, which many participated in. We had our very first House Olympics, in which the Orange team won. We got used to the familiar welcome from Mr. Sportell during conceptual physics and learned how to cram a ton of information on a note card for the Western Civ exam. We also had our first school dances and also got to experience our first and last winterum. Just when we were getting into the swing of what high school was all about, March 13 came along and high school all of a sudden looked differently. Instead of seeing each other every day at school, we saw each other through a screen. But some good did come out of this. Our second semester exams were canceled, something everyone was thankful for. <laughs> Even though our freshman year ended the way no one really expected, it was still a great first year of high school. James, seriously, you're on mute. That's embarrassing. Sorry about that. Anyways, Zoom calls became our new normal during sophomore year. We actually got to start off the year in person, but with mask mandates and many other regulations in place. All of our lunches were either outside with the bees or inside our flex room with a variety of TV shows. Chapel was also in our flex rooms, social distancing, of course. Homecoming was even turned into a housecoming, an amazing race style event for Community Action House through downtown Holland. Our sports teams, both indoor and outdoor, had to play with masks on, and our theater department got creative with their play holes. In November, we transitioned once again to distance learning, where our daily schedule filled with Zoom calls consisted of many internet problems, microphone issues, and gaming during our lectures. I think I speak for everyone when I say that we couldn't wait for 2021 when these calls would finally be over and we'd be back in person. After Christmas, we are finally back to in-person education. First semester exams were optional, a welcome change to most. We still had no in-person dances or student sections, but we enjoyed seeing our friends again. We all continued to grind through the year, which for many of us had our first AP class. Some people are still recovering from AP US history. Spring sports were excited to be back after a hiatus last season. When we finally made it to spring break, we could not have been more relieved. The January to March stretch was brutal, especially still in the heat of the pandemic. By June, most of us actually had our driver's licenses and were enjoying the fruits of independence. School was finally done and we were officially halfway there. Junior year, the year we finally became the upperclassmen. This year was a good year because it had returned to the normal that we all had been waiting for. The theme this year was rooted, which was a good reminder for us as we were just coming out of a pandemic to continue to stay grounded in God's word and trust him as we go through the storms in our lives. Our junior year gave, us, gave many of us a chance to be a part of varsity athletics for the first time, our first taste of college visits and taking our favorite ACT and SAT tests. This year was the year where, where early lunch release was introduced. We got very familiar with the weekly question of if you were group A or group B. If you have not noticed already, our grade is a very talented class in so many different ways. This year, the MIFA performance won first in state, the girls swim team got fourth in state, and the boys swim team earned the title of state runner-up. The boys soccer team and the boys basketball team both had an incredible year of competition and made their way to both earn the title of district champions. Many other teams won conference titles, and the robotics team was very successful at Worlds, becoming the world semifinalists. Our unified soccer team won the state championship and made their way to compete nationally with the Special Olympics in Orlando, Florida. The big accomplishments mean so much, but those were not the only thing that made our junior year special. We were able to do so much together, host a Special Olympics polar plunge at the high school for the first time, go to the hawaiian theme homecoming, go on a trip to Disney with a band, be a part of Powder Puff Volleyball and Football, where the girls would start their two undefeated seasons of football, watch our talented classmates excel in the Freaky Friday performance, going back to the 80s for the Living Hope Showcase, 
dressing up to go to her first prom at the museum and watch the seniors put Mr. Keene's GMC Yukon for sale on Craigslist. We love you, Mr. Keene. <laughs> this year, we had to say goodbye to our principal, Mrs. Feenstra, who had led her school so well, even through a pandemic. We extend a big thank you to Mrs. Feenstra for her leadership. It was finally here, senior year. We were about to find out if all of our dreams and expectations were true. It began in the summer with senior camp, a core memory for so many of us. We met Mr. Colago, our new principal. He even sat in the back of the bus with all of us senior guys. The feeling of family cultivated at camp continued to grow throughout the year. Our theme this year was streams of living water. And we were constantly reminded this year of all the things that we love about Jesus. At the start of the school year, we were finally the big dogs. We got to stand at the front of the student section, pose for Izzy's Flicks for Kicks Instagram account, <laughs> and yell at the freshmen for not cheering loud enough. Homecoming was back at the HC cafeteria, but the week leading up to it was even more epic than normal. We had a movie night in the auditorium, attended a girls' swim meet, and a favorite to most had the first ever HC dodgeball tournament. While the seniors didn't prevail, some of us did show the staff team who's the boss. House Olympics did not disappoint, and the Black House took a dominant victory. Later in the fall, on a beautiful night, we held the annual Powder Puff Girls football game. The seniors completed the sweep, going 2-0 in their career, ensuring their place as one of the greatest Powder Puff football teams of all time. On November 5, my personal favorite moment of the year took place, the soccer state final. The Maroons haven't been to the title game since we won in 2003, and the student body came out to Comstock Park in force. With clutch goals from Derek Heisman and Michael Pierce, the state championship was once again coming home to Holland Christian. This wasn't our only athletic success this year. However, we saw multiple regional titles with both the boys and girls tennis teams and girls basketball. We achieved an array of conference and district championships, while the boys swim and dive even took third in the state, and girls swim and dive earned the title of state runner-up. It wasn't just athletics this, that made this year special. We also saw our extracurriculars do exceptional, with MIFA winning their second consecutive state championship, robotics qualifying for their third consecutive world championship, our sailing team qualifying for nationals, and so much more. Our class wanted to leave a legacy, and that was certainly evident this year. Another critical part of this year that isn't measured by a trophy is chapel. Senior leaders in the chapel band led passionate worship services all year long, and they will always be remembered here at Holland Christian. They brought the living water to HC, and that was clear every single day. Our senior year was flying by, and I'm sure Tuesday off-campus lunches aided in that. Powder puff volleyball for the guys was epic, although our senior guys didn't fare as well as we'd hope in the finals. Prom, excuse me, junior senior banquet, was at Frederick Meyer Gardens with, and the beautiful butterflies that came with it. A wise man once said, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Our senior year has flown by, but it was jam packed with memories that we will never forget. Believe me, we've been there and we've done that, but most importantly, our last four years have equipped our minds and nurtured our hearts to go and make disciples to transform the world for Jesus Christ. We will, be always, we will always be grateful for these last four years and take the memories with us forever. We know that this is not a good goodbye, just to see you later. Our time at Holland Christian has prepared us for an amazing future. And as always, Go, go Maroons! Maroons. Good evening. Now we get this opportunity. I love this time in um, this, this ceremony because we get this opportunity to praise the one who we're actually here for. Um, and I promised that I wouldn't say too much, but uh, <laughs> I just want to say thank you guys for coming out. I wonder if we, this song means a lot because we uh, actually got to sing it first at senior camp and I remember when Mr. Kuman 
Yeah, I remember when Mr. Kuhn was like, I can't wait for the day that you guys sing that song and you walk across the stage. I think it was written in stone that this would be our class song and I'm really glad that we can proclaim that he won't fail on this Tuesday evening. Can we rise to our feet and worship the great I am? Say Christ is my firm. In Christ, Christ is my firm foundation. He's the, he's the rock. He's the rock on which when everything I around me. When everything around me. Say I've changed. never been more glad. I've never been. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Say he won't, he won't, he won't. Come on, somebody say he won't, he won't. No, he say I've still got joy, I've still got joy, and I've still got joy. In I've got peace that makes no sense. I've got peace that, and I won't be going. No, I won't be going. Say I'm not held by my own strength. I'm not held by. Upon the great I am. I build my life on you. No, he's never led. Cause he never say call him faithful, call him faithful. He's faithful in every So why would he? So why somebody in this room say he won't He won't No he won't say he won't he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't Somebody fail. say he won't, he won't, he won't. He won't. No, he won't, no, he won't, he won't. I've never seen him fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. Somebody say Christ is my firm foundation. And Christ is my
Good evening. My name is Emily Aslan, and I have the great pleasure and honor of introducing our speaker for tonight. He is one of the most kind and compassionate people I know. He might look tough on the outside, but he has one of the biggest hearts. I could say many more things about how great our speaker is, but I figured it would be good to hear from other students around Holland Christian as well. And I couldn't agree more with what they said. He is dependable, determined, a true friend, involved in our lives, sincere and honest. He is funny, quirky, a great teacher and mentor, and a good listener. He is patient and servant-hearted. I will always remember how he humbles himself walking the cafeteria floors, sweeping up crumbs, and pushing in chairs. As you and even a child of nine can see from my testimony and that of my fellow classmates, he is someone who clearly exemplifies the love of God through his actions and teachings. Our speaker has not only been teaching us math here at HC for 31 years, but more importantly, he has been teaching us how to live a life that points towards Christ. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Brian Lemon. Good evening, parents, family, friends, colleagues, and the important people tonight, our graduates. Am I really supposed to do this? Truth be told, I wish I could say to you, my students, there's been a change in plans. You and me, we're leaving. We're going across the street to room 204, going to ditch these goofy clothes we're both wearing and put on some comfortable clothes, and we're going to have my favorite, Costco cake. White cake with white frosting, I call a corner. We could just sit around and talk about old times. Oh, would that be nice. But I've always believed that when you are asked to do something, it's valuable to look for the Lord's confirmation. Recently, I was walking down the hall and was stopped by a senior. In a soft, sweet voice, she says, Mr. Lemon, I know you don't want people to know you're going to be the graduation speaker, but I'm so glad you were chosen. My response was, the class of 2023 is really special to me. She said, yeah, I know, I can feel it. You are very special to me. It was a behold confirmation from the Lord. So bottom line, I'm here tonight 
because of you. I am so proud of all of you. This has been my best year of teaching, period. I can honestly say I can't wait for Monday so that I can come to school to see my kids. That's you. I am completing my 40th year of teaching. I taught most of those people behind me. <laughs> I'm as old as dirt, and I'm having the best teaching year of my life. I should have brought Kleenexes up here. And it's you. Go Maroons. Just like in math class, there comes a time to become a bit more serious, and there's my subtle transition Take out something to write with and something to write on because what I'm about to tell you is true. I have entitled this little talk, You Are Blank. Now what? The blank isn't the word blank. It's like fill in the blank. At first it may appear that I did not have the title ready by the time Mrs. Vanderlaan needed to send it to the program printer. I can assure you that is not the case. You are blank, now what is exactly what I want the title to be. When I think about the class of 2023, I truly am blessed to have been able to be one of your teachers. I hold you in high regard when I think about you are blank, there are so many ways for me to fill it in. You are fun. You are leaders. You are authentic. You are authentic. Don't worry, that's not the old man screwing up. It happens to be one of your best descriptors. You are compassionate. You are loyal. You are state champions. You know, I had to mention that. You're friendly, you're energetic, you're hardworking, you're sincere, you're awesome, you're incredible, you're brave, you're passionate, educated, inquisitive. The list could go on and on, but there's one word that we will camp on tonight. And the word is loved. You are loved. All you have to remember tonight is you are loved. Thank you, Mr. Pett. It's a little embarrassing. That wasn't part of the script. Um, no, I don't know where I am. All you have to remember tonight is you are loved. It will be on tomorrow's test, so don't forget. Oh, and remember this too. Love is like Mac OS. This is an original idea. No AI here. I thought of it all by myself. <laughs> Love is like Mac OS. Doesn't that sound like it could be a New York Times bestseller? Maybe you're confused. Let me explain. Mac OS continues to change and improve. There are updates that happen regularly in Mac OS, and so it is with our understanding of the word love, and thus an understanding of you are loved. I have struggled mightily on how to make your reality of moving from knowing you are loved to believing it. First, I want you to look out in the crowd. Find your people. Make eye contact, wave to them, give them a thumbs up, maybe mouth the words, I love you. Act like you're in elementary school again when you couldn't wait to find your parents in the crowd and I'm in the wrong position because you can't see. But I'm not supposed to go past that line. Did you do it? All right. I have learned people are more similar than they are different. And I want to tell you a story about myself that I'm guessing is not unique. Your people out there, 
the people that love you, I believe, could tell a similar story. It was October 31, 1978, my senior year at Holland Christian High School. Tragedy struck the Lemon household. My four-year-old brother, Kevin, was hit by a car and died four days later. You can imagine the chaos that entered our home. There was anger. There were more questions than answers. Never would I have expected something like this to happen to our family. Kevin was loved. I have a precious picture of him sitting on the track watching me play in soccer right where the field is today. My siblings and I would race home from school to be first, so Kevin would sit on our lap. We all struggled with this death, but my parents did especially. After a short time, I sort of got frustrated with my parents. I have a hard time admitting that, but I needed my parents back to stabilize the home, and they couldn't. I was riding with my dad one day in the car and remember asking, when is mom going to get better? My dad said, Brian, you lost a brother and we lost a son and it's just different. Fast forward to 1989 and 1992, the biggest update of my understanding of the word love happened in those years. Lindsay, my daughter, and Ben, my son, were born. Prior to their birth, my wife Jane and I went through infertility and the heartache that goes along with that. God chose the adoption option for us. It worked out. Can you imagine me in a delivery room? <laughs> Prior to the birth of my children, Listen, I would say that I thought I loved God and that I thought I loved my wife. It turns out that I really didn't know what love was until my kids were born and placed in my arms. When Lindsay was placed in my arms, I said, holy cow, I wish it had been praise the Lord, but I believe God knew that is exactly what I meant. These children, Ben and Lindsay, caused a flash flood of love that totally consumed me. You know what I did when writing this piece? I googled Wadi Flood, and I watched videos of water raging through a Wadi. The Wadi was me. It was an emotional, holy moment. My children changed everything. Since the birth of my children, my favorite word in the whole wide world is dad. I was holding Lindsay for only a short time when I thought about that car ride I had with my dad. You lost a brother. We lost a son. It's just different. Of course, I loved my brother, but it was not the same love parents have for their children. My dad's comment now made sense to me. Why? Because I was now dad. Becoming a dad is the biggest love update I have ever had. Because I was a dad, I better understood what my earthly dad went through. Take it to the next level. I better understand what God went through. When I think of God giving up his only son for me, it's unfathomable. I no way, no how would be able to give up one of my children for someone else. Not going to happen. My love and understanding of God's great love grew exponentially. Good math term. <laughs> Class of 2023, people are more similar than they are different. Your people here tonight can tell a similar story of the love they have for you. You are loved. Which brings us to my second point. You are loved, so now what? Listen to Matthew 22. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? 
Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second, like it, second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Do you ever wonder why you've been made? I know many of you have been working at and wondering what's next. Here's truth. Once again, you were made to love and to be loved. Because you are so loved that love has to overflow back to God and your neighbors. Nothing new here. It may be true that I have learned more from you than you from me. Parents might ask for a refund. <laughs> you, the class of 2023, have given my understanding of the word love an update in the way you have shown me what it means to love God and love your neighbor. You have lived out Matthew 22. Two quick examples. I want to go back. It's already been mentioned to August when we got to attend senior camp. I've been to every senior camp since senior camp started. I never miss them. I remind you, I fit right in this year because I'm a senior too. <laughs> My purpose in attending senior camp, I'll have to confess, is somewhat selfish. It helps me focus and get my head put on straight. Before a school year starts, it reminds me that I get to teach, that I have the honor of teaching the students that I love, and that's you guys. This past year's senior camp was the best. Matthew 22, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. I witnessed you doing that firsthand. The class of 2023 knows how to worship, and that was on display here tonight. You show your love for God through that. For those of you who have not been to senior camp, there is a time when the ladies and gents split up. I'm not exactly sure what the girls do, but I know they wear funny dresses, stay up really late, and tear walls down and celebrate each other. Maybe. The boys sit by a fire, eat hot dogs and s'mores, and listen to a few teachers speak truth into their lives. After that, gentlemen, you know what happened. Not very many of you left the fire. There was a guitar and a spontaneous time of worship broke out. It went on and on. Things were said by you, by dudes. Personal struggles were shared. You asked to be held accountable. You desired mentorship. You asked to be prayed over, which Mr. Keene did. I know you remember that time it was holy. God was smiling. I didn't want it to stop. Thanks, guys, for being courageous and real, for teaching me what it means to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. It was another update of my understanding of love from my students. Just like Mac OS, another update. Did you know we won a state championship in soccer this year? Already mentioned again tonight, do you remember that was our second state championship in soccer in the last two years? We won a state championship in unified soccer. It didn't get as much coverage, but it was equally satisfying. I remember the day was freezing cold, October Saturday in Cutlerville. The wind made it very uncomfortable. We had to go into a PK shootout to win the final game. If you recall, we saw video clips of the PK shootout in chapel the following Monday after the championship game. Unified sports. It's one of the best things we have going at Holland Christian. It is a love fest had by all. The smiles on faces of both the athletes and the partners are priceless. Matthew 22, love your neighbor as yourself. The perfect picture of loving God is loving others. Unified is a picture of the kingdom God intended. If you've not been to a unified game, you need to come. You will be blessed. Heaven comes to earth. Special thanks, especially to the partners and the athletes. You have blessed us all and you have updated our understanding of the word love. Being part of unified sports from the sidelines makes me pause and wonder if I may have missed my calling in life. 
I get pretty excited about unified sports and how it includes all students. Sometimes when I don't feel like grading, which is all the time, I walk down to Mrs. Pulowski's room and hang out with the students there. I am blessed every time. Thanks, class of 2023, for being inclusive, for being streams of living water, for loving your neighbors well. Class of 2023, you have come to the end of your high school years. Your minds have been filled with knowledge. Your hearts have been nurtured. And now it's time to go. An ending always leads to a new beginning. In math land, we've, got a, we've gotten a lot of mileage out of the context of a bungee jump over the last four years. I thought it would be appropriate to end with a bungee jump context. It's time for you to jump. It's scary, but you'll be surrounded by others encouraging you and cheering you on. That is what love does. Before you jump, be sure you are anchored to something to avoid hurting your back or your neck. I'll give a solid recommendation. Connect To Jesus, the rock on which you stand. That sounds familiar. Understand, there will still be times that your knees will be shaking while standing on the solid, immovable rock. You are loved and Christ your rock will hold you fast when the rains come and the winds blow. And if you don't believe me on that, just listen one more time to the lyrics of your class song. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Because he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. As you stand on that firm foundation, be sure to look for those Mac OS type updates. Tonight or tomorrow when your computer says, update available. Think about how much you are loved and then commit to loving Jesus and loving others as you have done so well in your years here at HC. Because the beautiful truth is, love makes all the difference in the world. Finally, a third point, because you always have to have three. It's gift time. You heard me, a gift. I have a blessing for you from the book that we love. It comes from Psalm 121. Before I give this blessing, you need to know that this psalm is very special to me and to my kids. I read this to my kids, Lindsay and Ben, when I left them their freshman year of college. I read this to Ben and Kelly, his now wife, at their wedding. Psalm 121 was the scripture the pastor used at the wedding of my daughter, Lindsay, and her husband, Peter. It's pretty special, and tonight I use it for you my other kids. I am replacing some of the pronouns with the words my seniors. Getting a little selfish. I'm going to use a special Bible tonight. On the inside cover, it says, presented to Brian Lemon by Grandma Veenman on June 13, 1979, Holland Christian graduation. It's a really old Bible. But the words are still true. Could you please rise in body or soul to be, receive this blessing? My seniors, lift up your eyes to the mountains. Where does your help come from? My seniors' help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let my senior's foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over my seniors will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over my seniors. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. And some of you going to Israel, that will become a whole different meaning. 
The sun will not harm my seniors by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep my seniors from all harm. He will watch over your lives. The Lord will watch over my seniors coming and now going, both now and forevermore. Amen. May it be so. May God bless my seniors, the class of 2023, richly. Thank you. Praise God for you, Mr. Lemon. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and putting flesh and bones on love and the creator who instilled that within us. Thank you so much. Dear seniors, over the last 12 to 13 years, you have accomplished great feats to get you here. You have endured through late nights studying for final exams, you have persevered through early mornings preparing for athletics. You have pressed on through countless rehearsals. You have committed more than 2,300 days towards sharpening your minds and nurturing your hearts towards the vision that God has for you. But we would be remiss if we didn't acknowledge the 2,300 plus days and financial resources that your parents, your churches, and your school have poured into your lives. These are the people who spent their time and gas money to drive you from one event to another. These are the folks who spent hours preparing the table for you on Sunday to encounter God. These are the servants who cleaned you up after an accident, tied your boots at recess in the freezing cold, and carried your tears on their shoulders after a fall or a failure. These are the people who are here today to cheer you on as you step into adulthood and every square inch of the garden that God wants you to care for. You've heard our mission several times over the years, but here it is again. We have sought to equip your minds and nurture your hearts, and now is your time to go and transform the world distinctively for Jesus. Many of you will start essential businesses heal people as doctors and nurses, invent solutions to societal ills, or teach children how to read. These and many more vocations are important in the kingdom of God, yet this is the first century exhortation from Romans 12 that transformed the world distinctively for Jesus. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as, far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In, do in doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil 
with good. Class of 2023, thank you for your commitment to finish the race set before you. Now it is time for you to go and make disciples of all nations as living sacrifices and lead us toward the vision of the kingdom described in Revelation 7 of a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb declaring praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Dear family and friends of this year's graduating class, these 180 students will leave here tonight and take one more step into God's calling for them. Several students are heading directly into the workforce next year. Some are entering trade school. Others are beginning a gap year or mission work. And the remaining will be attending 45 different colleges and universities of those planning to attend a, second, a post-secondary institution, 94% said they are attending their first choice of college or university. And they have res received more than $5.7 million in scholarships. Let's give them a round of applause. Recognizing that their graduation is the, is the culmination of many years of Christ-centered education and communal sacrifice, the class of 2023 have chosen to mark their graduation as a district-wide celebration, with a few of the major contributors to their success participating in this evening's event. They have invited Mrs. Michelle Engbers from Holland Christian Southside School, and Mrs. Febe Gomez from Holland Christian's Pine Ridge School to assist Holland Christian School Board members, Mr. Doug Bowl, Dr. Stacy Jackson, and Mr. Mark Windemuller, along with our Holland Christian Head of School, Dr. Forseth, in the, in the distribution of diplomas, certificates, Bibles, and batons. Also, at the request of the class, Holland Christian High School staff members, Mrs. Sarah Christner and Mr. Devin Scott have been asked to read the names of the graduates tonight. Let's show all these folks our appreciation at this time as they come forward to the stage. We would also ask that the audience applaud for each graduate in an effort to affirm this important milestone in their lives. Thank you for your support of these students and for the mission of Holland Christian Schools evidenced by your attendance this evening. And now, having completed all the requirements for graduation, Dr. Forseth and all those in attendance tonight, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the Holland Christian High School graduating class of 2023. Lucas James Adams. Brenna Karen Alfrink. Violet Jane Altina. Lauren Marie Apotheker. Emily Claire Aslin. Audrey Elizabeth Borman. Mitchell Todd Borman. Larissa K. Ball. Jacob Robert Boss. Jason Reed Boss. Madison Valentina Boss. Noah Ryan Bauman. Caden Tyler Brink. 
Madison Lee Brink. Riley James Brower. James Ray Bruxford. Kayla Caroline Cannon. Kyle McCaleb Cannon. Emma Beth Chase. Andrew Logan Chesser. Jed Ryan Comden. Lucas Ronald Conklin. Lily Joy DeVito. Lydia Grace DeBleecourt. Samuel John DeBoer. Claire Aline DeKevitt. Aiden Matthew Del Calzo. Caleb John DeMaster. Nathan Michael DeWitt. Jaden Benjamin Dikama. Tirza Grace Dine. Josie Grace Doctor. Zachary Craig Drumheller. Hope Elise Dubois. Daniel Aaron Dykstra. Isabella Marie Dykstra. Jackson David Engbers. Ander Adeto Aduri. Jolie Noel Evenhaus. Benjamin Darian Feaster. Parker Thomas Fenton. Lauren Kate Fisher. Henry Clyde Fogg. Ian Zachary Foster. Lucas J. Frericks. Noah James Frericks. Jacob Alexander Gabriels. Nicole Madison Genzink. Alyssa Marie Gerritsma. Rafael Omar Gomez. Ainsley Morgan Granzetto. Kate Elizabeth Grotenheide. Lauren Jane Grotenheis. Samantha Joe Grotenheis. Clara Marie Grusing. Albert Levi Hawk. Harrison Thomas Helbert. Ashton Wade Halma. Ethan Paul Helms. Lauren Kristen Hemmicke. Ethan John Hurtgers. 
Kaya Emmanuel Hicks. Christian Matthew Hooksema. Theodore Henry Hallabeek. Paige Francis Hollis. Haley Lene Hanick. Ashlyn Elizabeth Haran. Avery Quinn Heisman. Derek James Heisman. Noah John Heisinga. Ashley Beth Hunderman. Elena Joy Eiford. Anna Elaine Jackson. Lily Ruth Johnson. Savan Visal K. Elise Marie King. Christopher James Kingdom Greer. Elizabeth Joy Claver. Samuel James Knott. Sydney Grace Coning. Abigail Lene Crawl. Merrick Allen Cremendall. Bria Grace Lampin. Paige Simone Lampin. Owen Wesley Harrison Langelier. Aiden James Leinstra. Ruth K. Moneylai Lumchimpazik. Isabel Maria Eliana Lies. Spencer Douglas Linsencum. Elijah Charles Luce. Maxwell Charles Mashila. Sierra Rose Malone. Nolan James Manis. Ella Marie Meckley. Gavin Wagoner Melcher. Myla Root Myard. Jacob Michael Meyer. Samantha Joe Meyer. Carson Walker Millspa. Daniel Jameson Morgan. Erica Nicole Mulder. Anna Joy Muma. 
Samuel Austin Murillo. Trevor David Nagelkirk. Brody Abram Nelson. Catherine Elizabeth Nelson. Natalie Sue Nyhoff. Kylie Jo Nyland. Sakura Sekaguchi. James Riley Osterhaus. Tristan James Overway. Andrew Sean Pakanowski. Annie Caroline Petrak. Michael Thomas Pierce. Sophia Christine Pierce. Sarah Michelle Plagamars. <laughs> Stephen Michael Plagamars. <laughs> Joshua Dale Ribbons. <laughs> Emily Ann Rogowski. Joshua David Rosema. Lillian Fisher Ryden. Kiria Marie Reinsberger. Jaden Elizabeth Saul. Grant Thomas Sauerball. Sophia Brielle Shellstrati. Kate Jane Skimper. Emily Bryn Scoggin. Sakura Sekaguchi. Xinyue Shen. Harris Jason Shook. Kendall Grace Sills. Anna Faith Slink. Jamin Gray Smith. Connor James Smith. Piper Elizabeth Sortman. Carter William Spencer. Grant Christopher Spoolhoff. Brooklyn May Spooner. Henry Jerome Steenweik. Mia Meselech Stordaboom. Samuel David Strabing. Braden Daniel Stradley. Elliot Daniel Sweeney. Kristen Olivia Seibsma. 
William John Seitzma. Stella Ray Tenbrink. <laughs> Noah Aaron Tenholt. <laughs> Megan Kathleen Tolsma. <laughs> Greta Catherine Traver. Sophie June Valance. <laughs> Abigail Grace Van Brocklin. <laughs> Ella Ann Vandenberg. <laughs> Kayla Jean Vandenberg. <laughs> Oliver Michael Vandenberg. Ainsley Grace Vandenbrink. <laughs> Jenna Ann Vandenbrink. <laughs> Sophia Joy Vanderbeek. <laughs> Hadley Grace Vanderbent. Garrett William Reynard Vanderlaan. <laughs> Ryan Gustav Vanderveen. <laughs> Shane Matthew Vanderzee. <laughs> Trina K. Vanderswag. Julia Sue Van Gelder. Madison Elizabeth Van Hoven. Dorothy Emma Van Iwerden. Ava Grace Van Klompenberg. Mitchell Rob Van Meter. Jency Carolina Van Vliet. Olivia Lucille Van Vliet. Allison Ruth Vickstrom. Samuel James Visser. <laughs> Hannah Jo Wieringa. <laughs> Catherine Grace Wilmot. <laughs> Ryan Charles Windemuller. Spencer Wayne Wisdom. <laughs> Abigail Marie Wood. <laughs> Joshua Steen Woolsey. <laughs> Molly Ann Zahn. <laughs> Shen Chen Zhou. Callista Faith Zwart. Mr. Lemon, what an amazing speech. 
Which, yeah. Which I believe is only eclipsed by who you are. And that's not only true for you, but that's true of all the teachers at Holland Christian. As a parent, as a board member, as parents, as students, let's just take a second and say thank you to the people who have poured into our children. You have heard a student say it, a teacher say it, and an administrator say it. And as a board member, let me say it again. Holland Christian exists to equip minds and nurture hearts to transform the world for Jesus Christ. Class of 2023, your minds have been equipped. Although as a parent, I do think they could be more equipped at times. <laughs> and your hearts have been nurtured. And now you are unleashed to transform this world for Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that whether you head off to college, or whether you enter the workforce, whether you are heading into the mission field, or whether you have no idea what the future holds, or whether you were the one from this class who was taken too soon, but tonight is held safely in the arms of the risen Christ. Know this, Holland Christian will always be home. You will always belong here. And maybe more importantly, you do not leave to transform this world alone for God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit goes with you. And so I invite you, parents and family and friends, to raise your arms. They're going to get blessed by my bald spot, but they can be blessed by you. Please extend your hands. Listen carefully, class of 2023. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards each of you and give you his peace now and forevermore. And all God's people said... Amen. Amen.